Great. Thanks a lot. Hello, everyone. Thanks a lot for joining today for the amazing webinar, which is a great union innovation webinar. It's great to have all of you here. I hope you all are having a fantastic day to start with. Today, we'll kick start with, with an exciting topic, AI and automation, supercharging great union innovation. We are really excited to have you all here. Let me begin by introducing myself and AI Core Spot to you. My name is Nitin Naveen. I'm Vice President Innovation Strategy at AI Core Spot. With over a couple of decades of experience in the consulting firms dealing with emerging technologies, I feel fortunate to consistently engage with a lot of global leaders, stakeholders, incredible problem solving, and they have a lot of innovative ideas, which I always admire. Joining me today are a few of my colleagues, Arvind, Archana, and in the back end, we have Naveen, who will add some energy to this event. So a big applause to them for their dedication and bringing this all together. Let me tell you something about our company, AI Core Spot. It was founded more than three years back. It is a knowledge hub focusing on a lot of emerging technologies like AI, ML, robotics, IoT, and so on. Our webinars aim to share the latest technological advancements in the industry. We dive into various tech sectors, unveiling a fresh theme every month and steadily gaining momentum. Our goal is to become the leading AI-driven community worldwide where individuals like you with similar interests can contribute to mutual growth and success. We are committed to organizing a lot of industry-backed webinars, hybrid events, where we ground our knowledge through credible data we receive or we get from industry leaders, subject matter experts, thought leaders, and all our trusted partners. Additionally, we fine-tune our content across various digital platforms. It comprises of a lot of blogs we write, videos we do, podcasts we do as well. Also, we share monthly newsletters to shed light on this ever-evolving industry. So please like our social media channels. Now coming about today's webinar, as I said in the beginning, a really exciting topic is up for today, which is great union at the forefront. How AI and automation is driving the innovation. You will learn a lot of different things here, including personalization, knowledge sharing, data quality, and a lot many more, which is going around in the great innovation. Our expert panels will share in valuable insights and engage in thought-provoking discussions that you won't want to miss. Let me just kick off the discussion with some quick highlights. Meet our community partners for today. We have four great companies. Let me introduce them. It's First Tech Federal Credit Union. We have Edelman Financial Engines. Then we have Global Credit Union. And then the fourth company is we have InfoVision, who played a crucial role in making this webinar a success. Also, a big thanks to all our attendees. Your time and presence means a lot to us. We appreciate your being here to achieve your goals and connect with the fellow participants. Our platform's main goal is to help you gain valuable insights and build meaningful relationships. If you leave with a few innovative ideas or build new connections, we'll consider it a job well done. Now, let me introduce our esteemed speakers for today. The first esteemed speaker is Zach who is the Senior Director, Advanced Analytics, Enterprise Data Analytics Center of Excellence at First Tech Federal Credit Union. Our second speaker is Himanshu, who is Senior Director, Data Analytics and AIML at Edelman Financial Engines. Our third esteemed speaker is Laura. She is Vice President of Technology Engineering at Global Credit Union. And our fourth speaker and moderator for the event is Yuvaraj, who is AVP, Managing Client Partner and Head of Sales for Banking Financial Insurance at InfoVision. Just one liner disclaimer before we start. The views shared by all the speakers are their personal ones, not related to the organization which they represent for. So let's start the day, guys. Now I'll hand it over the stage to Yuvraj to begin this exciting panel discussion. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, good morning, all, and good evening, wherever uh, you guys are attending uh, across globally. Uh, thanks for this opportunity for all of us. Um, I'm, I'm equally excited as you guys to hear some of these uh, topics and trends in credit union while artificial intelligence and automation is happening across the all industries, right? Uh, to start with, maybe uh, uh, Himanshu, if you can, uh, you know, start like, uh, you know, how to improve the product adoption, right? If you can share some of your insights, we'll, we'll kick start from there. Thank you, Yavaraj. Good morning, everybody. My name is Iman Susa. I lead data pl ML platforms and data engineering teams at Adelman Financial Engines. 
very excited to be here and thank you InfoVision and AI Coursebot for inviting me to this webinar. Uh, to answer your question, Yuvraj, AI and automation is revolutionizing the financial industry, right? Credit unions, banks, financial services industry. There are so many opportunities are being uh, are coming up for us. Uh, AI automation revolutionizes the customer experiences by tailoring financial uh, financial solutions that meet unique needs of each individual customers. Uh, what it can do is companies have been amassing large amount of the customer data, such as demographics, account activity, transaction histories, customer interactions through various channels, right? Mobile, uh, web websites, uh, even the local branches. So companies can build 360 degree view of customer based on their individual preferences, behaviors, and needs. And based on this analysis, there are a couple of areas that I would like to highlight what AI and automation can do, mainly AI. AI can generate personalized product recommendations, such as savings checking accounts, investment options, loan products that meets and suits with customer needs, as well as their risk tolerance. AI can also generate customized content, such as financial reports, uh, budgeting tips, or education materials that can improve the knowledge and uh, understanding of the financial industry for individual customers. AI can optimize marketing efforts because now we know so much about custom, our customers, their individual needs and uh, desires that we can segment customers into relevant groups based on their characteristics and preferences, allowing credit unions, banks deliver targeted messages as well as offers through relevant channels, right? Wherever the customers are, be it through emails, social media, or even personalized web or mobile app notifications. What this allows us to do is increase engagement and conversion of our product adoption in credit unions, banks, and financial services industry. Overall, AI offers a powerful tooling that can enhance customer experience by creating more meaningful interaction with the customer, building stronger connections with the customers, and ultimately it will drive customer satisfaction, customer loyalty, and the mutual success of customers as well as the credit unions in this evolving financial landscape. Thank you, Himanshu. I think that's that's a great start. Uh, at least brings all of us uh, what we are talking, right? And, and that, those are all the great insights. Um, uh, maybe like I'll I'll take this a little more deeper uh, into the next level, right? Where maybe Zach, if you can, uh, you know, give some of your perspectives, right? Um, uh, how to uh, you know explore the product adoption experimentation further? Thank you. Uh, experimentation is a huge topic, right? Um, it's one of the areas that allows us, at the end of the day, to make sure that we meet the needs of our members, right? Uh, what what um, modules, what tools, what products uh, are the ones that really attract attention and really cover needs of our member bases? Uh, to be able to answer these kind of questions, experiments are needed, right? And the reason that we resort to experimentation is that um, it allows us to control for variables of interest, uh, to see what exactly is involved in, in behaviors. It allows us to establish causation, not just uh, be left at the correlation level. And it also uh, allows us to repeat uh, things. If we see things work, then we have a trusted way of uh, making the processes repeatable. Um, I find it as, um, you know, infusing experimentation in a scientific sense into the uh, uh, adoption um, uh, journey of a product. Uh, to me, it's an essential step. Uh, one needs to be quite aware of how to go about experimentation. There's a lot of statistics involved, um, not to um, to uh, go over an, an exhaustive list, but uh, you know things like power analysis or talking about your samples, designing your samples, designing the experiment, defining the control and experimental groups. All these things go into this process, right? So uh, one needs to be quite aware and um, quite comfortable in uh, in designing this process to ensure that at the end of the day results are going to be valuable they, they're going to be valid and they can be trusted 
Thank you, Zach. Um, hey, Lara. So probably like, uh, you know, the digital is loosely worded, right? Across all industry, we keep hearing about digital mm -hmm. and digital workers, especially in credit unions and in the AI space. Uh, could you please share your insights on these digital workers? Absolutely. So um, the way that I think about it, I came from automation and we have talked about digital workers for a good long time. And uh, digital workers are really the concept of instead of talking about um, augmenting our employees, we talk about bringing digital workers to bear on teams. And the reason that we do that in automation is it really changes the conversation from, oh my gosh, this is taking away parts of my process to, hey, this is a new member of my staff. It also gets us out of this, um, oh my gosh, the robots are coming type of conversation. Uh, and one of the things that I'm looking to do is do the same thing with things like chatbots and AI environment. The idea being that you're bringing in a bot a chatbot or a new model and that model has the persona of a you know maybe even has has a name of a human then you can apply the same type of ideas and rights and access to that bot um, instead of moving towards you know hey every time you access or the the information that this uh, ai chatbot may have is vast and broad beyond what an actual human would have so if you can do that and you can actually bring it back into um, this digital worker concept you can really have a conversation about okay bringing on a digital worker has kind of similar similar feel to bringing on a new employee instead of talking about again hey, AI is coming and it's coming for our jobs. So I just love the concept. I think it really helps frame this technology in a way that people can understand. And also that, uh, you know, really makes this stuff personal for teams. Makes sense. I, I, I like it, Laura. When you say it's a digital worker, I like that concept because I totally agree, right? The, Robots are not taking our job. It's the people who know how to use those robots will take your job. I think that motivates a lot of the folks who is hearing and who is going to hear this conversation. Thanks, Imanshu and uh, Lara. I know I think we started great, right? Uh, we talked about the product adoption. We talked about the, how, you know, Zach explained a little bit more details, right? How to experiment it. And Lara and you both uh, talked about the digital workers, right? Now, I, I just wanted to slightly change the topic to the knowledge sharing side of it, right? And which includes the change management and so on and so. Uh, maybe the question to you, Zach, uh, how does the change management uh, help in generating the trustworthy insights, especially in credit union space or in this AI space? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I feel this is a, a very important aspect, right? Uh, we're we're all in the uh, in the um, in the field of changing uh, perceptions about how work is to be done, introducing new techniques. Uh, Laura just spoke about um, digital workers, right? So these are new no notions, and they, they need to be um, uh, communicated first of all at every level level within an organization, understood and shared, right? Uh, this is a game that needs to be won. Um, usually, we, we don't go, you know, working in a corner and bringing in results to the organization. That's not how it works, as you know. Uh, we work together as a team. We're sharing knowledge and we move forward. Um, to make these changes understood and to uh, to, to get the so-called buy-in from everyone within the organization so one can proceed to applying changes, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, right? Uh, open channels of communication, uh, bringing down silos within the organization, uh, being plain in explaining the ideas and the notions and, and the plan. Uh, all these are qualities that help, um, you know, uh, bring people together uh, and uh, at the end of the day, working as a team within the organization. Uh, one person alone cannot make it. Um, and, and that's where the, um, you know, the trick is, so to speak, right? We need to be able to communicate effectively, get buy-in from people, get their support, and slowly but surely move on with the changes to be implemented, whether we're talking about AI, ML, 
um, large language models, which is, you know, the latest fad and so on and so forth. And I love that too. I mean, when, when you talk about organizational change management and that communication piece, absolutely critical for these, these new technologies. I was thinking as, as, um, as, as you were talking too about kind of the need, need to really find the coalition, your coalition of the willing or supporters for the technologies mm -hmm. to really um, be ready to be out there and to be your early adopters. And finding the right ones and finding the right ones within your organization and let them tell the story, right? Instead of like always exactly. oh, coming from tech, right? That's absolutely that's great. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm seconding it, right? So Himanshu, you want to add something or I was agreeing with both Laura and Zach. Uh, it's finding your early adopters, tell having them tell the story, starting small, right? Make it successful and then iterate on it and then repeat that across the entire organization is the way to move forward. Uh, just to add, to add one small thing here, um, mapping out the field before one starts in this process is very important, right? Uh, one needs to be aware of who is, um, so to speak, friendly towards uh, making these kind of changes or has a, an intuitive spirit, so to speak, in their team to proceed with these kind of explorations. Uh, so uh, some, some kind of strategic thinking is needed before one embarks into this journey, right? Um, both uh, Laura and Himan, she talked about um, early adapters, for example, uh, people who feel, uh, you know, uh, that they want to uh, join forces in this kind of journey forward. So this kind of strategic mapping is essential and it will pay off uh, definitely as one moves ahead. Awesome. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, so probably like, uh, let me change the topic a little bit more uh, into the innovation. Innovation cannot be discarded in any industry, especially when it comes to our knowledge sharing and knowledge management and all these things, and even for the growth and retention of the industry. Uh, now, uh, maybe like uh, Lara, maybe I'll start with you and then Himanshu and uh, Zach, feel free to chime in as appropriate your point of views as well. Since it's a broader topic, I, I don't want to limit to you know, one of you, right? Um, it can lead to greater efficiency. We all know that, right? Innovation can lead to a greater efficiency and uh, gives a competitive edge as well. Uh, maybe please explain how to foster this innovation in credit union space, uh, Laura, to start with. This is a great question. I think one that a lot of credit unions right now are, are working towards. And uh, personally, as somebody who started my career at Procter & Gamble, I, I uh, started with this idea that um, A.J. Lapley said a long time ago, which was make a little, sell a little, learn a lot. And that has really been a part of the core of me for, for my career. Um, so as we've gone on to this innovation journey, what I've really looked to do is find ways to give somebody a path from idea to prototype to potential production um, in a way that's understood and in, in a way that has that type of experimental uh, approach um, so that what we're doing is we have limited time or limited resources and we work on something very very particular with a goal in mind then we report the results and that then goes to different phases of this um, one of the things we have to do in general is make sure that people are really trying things more fostering that type of big idea type of approach. And that means we don't just celebrate our wins, something that just went over to production. We have to start celebrating when we learn something. So I would say if you have an innovation program and 100% of your prototypes go into production, you're probably not thinking big enough because we have so many things to do as a credit union. We have so many things to do as an industry. There are lots of ideas that are wide open there. And we, you know, having these types of programs gives us those chances to really make a difference for our members. Completely. Yep. I think uh, I would add on to that also is the innovation comes when we are bringing cross functional teams together. 
and giving them the complex challenges, like the folks from business coming together with the technology and kind of embedded effort to address a complex challenge is when we have, I have seen a truly innovative ideas, prototypes and actual products coming out of that engagement. And what Laura mentioned, right? We have to celebrate successes. We have to reward the risk taking. We have to provide as a leaders, we have to provide resources, promote the knowledge sharing, seek and listen the feedback, create the prototype, go back to the business, go back to the customer, seek the feedback, and then iterate on that and build better and better outcome, better and better product. Absolutely. And I think sometimes with technology, we forget um, it's it, we keep thinking of technology as something that resides always in IT. And the fact is business and the technology of business is really starting to meld with us. And so bringing those cross-functional teams together is um, absolutely critical to solving the big problems of the credit union. Uh, I would like to, uh, to add a couple of things also uh, on, on the culture itself, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, learn to be vulnerable. That's one of the main things, right? No idea is to be wasted um create an environment that people can be heard they can participate in evaluation uh don't be afraid to fail uh as a matter of fact i would say there's no such thing as failure in experimentation right or in trying ideas you learn something at the end of the day so the the culture of sharing and and you know learning how to be vulnerable is also something that contributes to um uh to trying ideas out to innovation at the end of the day I certainly agree so, all three three point of your views, right? Go ahead, Lara. You're saying something? Oh, I was gonna just agree. I mean, absolutely having those types of uh, you know, having those pieces as a facet of your culture is is absolutely critical, not just for innovation, but really for the success of a, a company going forward. Yeah. And uh, effective collaboration between business or IT or whatever the functions we work together. And uh, learning is a continuous improvement. And certainly we all agree that. Uh, maybe I'll take this to the next level, right? Uh, since we are touching on the knowledge management portion as well, uh, we all know how it is crucial in, in any industry and especially in credit unions as well. Uh, maybe Himanshu, if you can start with your point of views, right? Um, you know, how, uh, you know, this is aiding the credit unions. Sure. Uh, so what I, what I have observed and what I've seen speaking with my colleagues from many other companies and organizations is over a period of time the knowledge within a company becomes siloed or decentralized because we have so many legacy systems so many new systems coming on board and it becomes very very hard for a lot of people even internal stake internal users as well as obviously customers becomes hard for them to find right information at the right time with advances in uh, large language models and a generative AI, the chatbots have kind of came up now where it become highly effective for sharing the information easily within a company. Because what it can do is it can act as a centralized resource or centralized repository of information that can provide employees. And I'm just focused talking about employee, internal like employees right now is it can provide quick and easy access to in internal policies, procedures, FAQs, documents, and employees can interact with through the chatbot to ask the question, retrieve the relevant information, right? And in real time. Uh, what we have seen in last one year uh, with advances in large language model, we are able to create more capable conversational experiences. And those, but these large language models are trained on public data. So it cannot answer or generalize its responses to our internal enterprise knowledge base. So a new concept is, has been coming up called retrieval augmented generation that can be used where a chatbot, where we can use the capabilities of large language model, and but it will only apply to your internal repository, right? Your internal knowledge base. So what the retrieval augmented generation does is it can uh, an application can use a rag uh, or other, otherwise it's known as rag r a g a rag approach retrieves information 
relevant to users' question from your internal repository, bundles is at, as a context, and along with users' question, it sends that as a prompt to the large language model. And we can use any of the open source or available closed source large language model to get the response from our our repositories. This allows kind of addresses two is two or this is allows two benefits, right? One is limits your response to your company's repository, which means your employees are getting most relevant, more useful information and not getting some generic response that large language models are usually giving out. The second thing is also security, right? Data security is important. So this, this implementation can also limit based on your company and the user's access policy, what they see as part of the response. So if an individual is only able to access certain uh, documents or certain information, you can apply that same access policy on, in this model also. So overall, what's happening is the chatbots are becoming a convenient and efficient way to share information and enhance productivity. This results in engaged and informed organization. The same technique, can also be used to engage with our customers, right? So our credit union members and customers, because what, what, what it can do is allows automated chatbots to answer questions, resolve issues, and even offer to an extra financial uh, advice in real time. So it can simulate, the chatbots are able to simulate natural conversations and adapt responses that are based on your customer interaction, your employee interactions, and it provides personalized experiences for your customers. Thanks, Imanshu. Yeah. Good luck. And, and I, I would say too, this, this RAG approach, especially for internal employees, is an excellent on-ramp to uh, starting to work with these models, starting to get an idea of how AI, these new AI models work. Because that idea of, hey, maybe I have an HR chatbot. I mean, how many times do I ask, like how how uh, how benefits work, or um, you know, how do, how one takes a leave of absence? Uh, those those types of questions now are available at your fingertips, right? Um, and then on top of that, you have things where you need to train up new employees. Think of our call centers and such, where you need specific information. You need specific for your credit union and you need a guide to help somebody through some of the more complicated bits of that work and having those types of capabilities is a great way to just really get in there get people familiar with it and also get familiar with how to adjust these models going forward um yep. One thing that I would like to add here uh, just specifically for the uh, credit union space is that we are a regulated industry, right? We do get auditors that go over everything that we implement and um, they say yay or nay at the end of the day, right? So um, using uh, large language models in this context, maybe RAG or not, uh, is subject to the regulations also. We need to be aware of the fact that the answers that we receive and we provide as feedback have been vetted exhaustively before used. So um, I feel we are at the, at the stage of uh, still evaluating this, these technologies per se. And let's not forget that, um, you know, we had similar uh, questions to answer when dealing with uh, earlier NLP uh, approaches, right? Uh, such as topic identification or uh, LDA, you know, things of that nature anyway. So it's not the first time I think uh, we're getting to a maturity stage, we're just still evaluating, right? So that we can offer something which is secure, uh, safe, compliant, uh, and respective of privacy. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, and that's why what most of the companies that I have been talking to, they are starting with that internal chatbot, what Laura mentioned, like an HR chatbot or internal, because we absolutely don't want to put something in front of our customers or members that's not been vetted, that's not been verified. So kind of automated generation or chatbot with a human feedback at the end before we can, we say, yep, this looks good or this is correct. Right. Absolutely. Um, on top of that, you know, one of the things as we talk about these models, when we start talking about things like uh, a lending, 
um, and lending practices and stuff. I think those are the places too that we've got to be really, really careful that we have a person in the middle, um, in yep. especially not just for regulatory but for ethical reasons. Uh, you know, like Zach, you said, this technology is right at its infancy. Um, we're starting to play with it, but you know, really understanding those ethical implications are are going to hit. Um, they're already hitting in different places. So, just being very mindful and very transparent about the technology that we use is going to be really useful, hopeful, and useful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. A lot of insights, uh, especially some of the examples and restrictions. What you guys talk specific to this industry, I think that that uh, helps a lot. Uh, unless if you all three wanted to add a few more examples on AI and LLM, we can spend some more time or else I can take some of the questions came up from the audience. Okay. The first question is from uh, Seth Perry. What role do AI powered chatbots or virtual assistants play in enhancing member and engagement and support within the credit unions? So in this question, I really think that, you know, the role that AI powered chatbots um, particularly play with member engagement um, is, is very targeted at the moment. Like we have to be very careful about how we do that and how we engage. Um, but I do think that there are places where, where we can kind of do the same thing that we were talking about with the HR robotics. Uh, where you you can take publicly available information and build that into into a bot persona. Um, but right now, I think getting too far in um, can get us, uh, you know, into those kind of questionable areas where we're not quite sure about the technology. And then as far as support within credit unions, to me, a lot of this will be like the uh, call center and having a call center kind of assistant that's that's working. You can also see this in, on the IT side when you start hooking in RAG with action. So if you hook the robotics in to these, these pieces, then we have the chance to really take all of those knowledge bases we have in tools like ServiceNow and build them into actionable, uh, something that you can actually call and say, hey, what's going on with my system? You know, What do I do from this spot? Um, those types of things, I think, are going to really start clicking in the next year. I agree. And uh, an, exam an example that I would give is uh, specific on the support side. We have, we have seen so many times our members or even internal users trying to find certain information, right? How do I reset password? Very simple example. What are the steps? Who do I, uh, do I need to submit a ticket? A lot of this information is in internal repository, be it SharePoint or some database somewhere, ServiceNow or Salesforce or whatever. This the chatbots, AI powered chatbots, can make that information visible uh, through that conversational experience in a standardized format. And it, since it is, it will come from an existing repository of information most of the time it's correct but sometimes it will also identify duplicative information in your internal repository so it over period of time it can make standardization of your documentation and processes it can identify where it's needed and it can actually make it happen and enhancing member engagement we all kind of uh, talked about right we are at a cusp of that where we are we have to be validating we have to validate how these large language models are responding. Uh, regulatory privacy compliance, security is a big question mark, uh, big question right now that we all need to collectively answer. Thanks, Laura. Imanshu, hope that answers uh, Seth's uh, question. Uh, I do have another question from Preeti Sharma. How do you envision the intersection of AI and automation shaping the future landscape of credit unions? And what fundamental changes do you anticipate in terms of operations, member experiences, and overall industry dynamics? There are two parts of the question. Feel free, whoever want to start, and the others can add to it as well. Got some ideas. Um, you know, first of all, the features are in yet. 
so you know we're in the the earliest section of some of these technologies but when i think about it i think about productivity i think of you know the the idea that within maybe five to ten years our interactions will be multi-agent there will be sometimes more agents digital workers working um, than people um, in a certain thing we'll we'll have our own agents that we're we're working with and interacting with and changing the processes of um, and and people will just get familiar with them um, I think that will continue. I think people get very comfortable with this type of digital piece. Um, we already know that you can get a different interaction between talking to a human or talking to a call center agent versus talking to a robot. Um, somebody told me once, robots don't judge. So sometimes you can get into things, you can ask questions that you may not feel comfortable asking, uh, you know, asking a human. Um, so I think we're going to see more of that, especially as younger generations come in and they're more familiar with these technologies and more open to them. Um, as far as industry dynamics, we've got data. Data is going to be super important for us all, good data. That's going to be critical. And the other piece will be all these connections between us, between financial institutions. Um, this is going to require a really nice enterprise integration platform um, to work. You will need to understand how people access your data um, and how to do that safely and securely because it's not going to be where we're breaking down the silos of even different financial institutions at this point, and that's going to continue. I will add on to that is. Uh... In terms of overall industry dynamics, there are innovations that are bound to happen with the capability of large language model AI and the integration of AI and what Laura was talking about, the agents that can automate your processes, right? That interaction will kind of uh, come up, uh, will develop so much innovation in this industry. So we will, we are bound to see new, new competitors coming up that are all on online or have something you know something different than what all of the existing credit unions or banks have been providing we have seen that in past with uh, some of the online platforms like for example when robin hood became the rag the rage in a few years ago and changed how retail investor came into market it brought a lot of new users into investing same thing something similar will happen in this industry as well through the ai and automation again security regulatory compliance privacy compliance is, is of utmost uh, is most critical in this area because of what we deal with we deal with what people and their money and their future right so we need to be very careful about how we leverage this capability but ultimately at the end as long as our end goal is improving customer experience, improving their satisfaction, and that should turn into member loyalty. So that's where AI and automation can help, and it can actually do that in a, I would say, a little bit more process, uh, automated or process-oriented way, and it can help all of us. Thanks, uh, Laura. Uh, uh, yeah. Just uh, just one comment. Um, I, I'd like to play a little bit of devil's advocate on this one. Uh, first of all, I, I will postulate that the human factor will always be needed, right? There's I don't I don't foresee that humans will be out of the equation. You know, uh, the, the the robots or the chatbots uh, taking over. Uh, having said this, a um, a smooth interaction between the human factor and the uh, AI factor will probably lead to optimized results, right? Whether we're talking about optimization of processes, uh, cutting down time uh, needed to, to carry out um, tasks, uh, enhancing member experience uh, by providing richer content, identifying needs in a much better way, being more seamless in the kind of servicing that we provide, all these can be facilitated by AI. And at the same time, I feel the human factor will be there to complement all these uh, all these things. 
So um, a kind of um, you know a, approach taking both into account the human factor and the AI. Thank you all. Thanks, Zach. I uh, hope that uh, I think that briefly explains uh, Preeti Sharma's question. Uh, hope they both got answered. Uh, I think with the we are coming to the last segment, which I have. And unless you have to add more topics, feel free. We have thirty minutes more. Uh, this is on the data quality. Maybe Himanshu, you can start like, uh, you know, how the data quality is helping the uh, in the credit union industry. That's that's a great question, and it's very broad. Just to be to be very honest, but uh, I would I would probably start with like, a, since we are talking about AI, uh, Open AI released Chat GPT a little over a year ago, right? Since then, many companies and many of the vendors that most, many of us use have embedded generative AI capabilities in their solutions, in their products. Many new companies have come up with their own generative AI products. With all the buzz around generative AI, large language model have reignited the focus and the priority on data quality and accessibility once again. And for the right reasons, right? The last time we had seen such a buzz on data quality, data accessibility, or data lineage was about when Sabana's actually actually became a act came out, or European Union released the GDPR uh, regulation. <clears throat> since then, like since GDPR and Sabana's ox, companies have invested heavily in data platforms to make sure that we are data and AI platforms have privacy regulatory compliant. Generative AI wave has once again brought this back into focus and it brings great opportunity, but with a great risk if data management practices, data quality, data accessibility is not appropriately implemented and followed. What, what I'm seeing is there are tons of opportunity, but at the same time, there are tons of risk also, right? So the opportunities being if you have high quality, timely data, accessible data, we can generate timely insights, right? Re reliable insights can be generated. Companies can respond to customer demands in timely manner. Risk management, like timely accurate data, allows organizations to identify and mitigate risk. The access to high quality data fuels innovation by leveraging advanced analytics, uncovering valuable insights, and uh, it can unlock new opportunities and business growth. On the flip side, if you don't have good data quality, good data management practices, the risk are real, right? Your AI models that you are training, if you are training an AI model on a low quality data, it leads to poor predictions and accuracy. There is a, we have all talked about bias, a lot of broad landing in past, where there is a huge conversation, right? In the industry about bias in terms of who do you land? What are the factors? If you are using AI to train your kind of, a, if you have a landing more AI model that has bias, inbuilt bias, because you are not using diverse set of data, you don't have comprehensive data, it will generate biased output. So regardless of what you do, your AI model is not gonna do well. Right? The other thing is if you have outdated data, right? we have seen so many times, we have data pipelines running all over the place. Sometimes pipeline fails, many times it fails, nobody knows. You have outdated data. It doesn't reflect your current state of affairs, which means your insights that you are generating is irrelevant and out of date, doesn't have. So what I would say is the high quality, timely, accessible data is essential for AI and automation, not just in credit unions or financial services industry, but in all domains. As it, because it forms the foundation for your decision making, improved efficiency and accurate unbiased predictions for your AI models. Organizers have invested so heavily in past many, many, many years in your in data platforms, in data governance efforts. And with recent advances, as I mentioned in generative AI, the opportunities and risk it brings requires organizers organizations to re to go back to that priority and deliver on data governance quality and accessibility because it will help us to maximize the value of the data reduce the risk and ultimately where it leads to is to win the customer's trust and business 
Himanshu, uh, uh, maybe like uh, Zach, if you can explain a little bit further, right? Uh, how can we ensure the quality of the data? I know it's a broader sure. topic again, but you can pick some of the examples uh, that is more specific to AI and uh, the credit union space. Uh, sure. Um, they, I, I would like to um, um, adopt a, a wider view. Um, data is one aspect, of course, and as Himanshu pointed out, it's a very important one, right? Um, if I had, if I was asked about the ingredients for success in analytics, I would, I would sum up uh, what we heard so far in a few dimensions. Uh, the first one of them being having trusted data, right? And Himanshu uh, really, uh, you know, expanded on that. Uh, and uh, what the quality of data, the unbiased nature of data, the richness of data play at the end result, right? At the same time, I, I would like to also refer to uh, how advantageous it is to have a sole source of truth, right? Uh, instead of having disparate uh, places where information resides that can be either duplicated or out of out of date or what have you. Uh, having solutions or adapting solutions like a person master, for example, to ensure that the entities that you're talking about are indeed well defined or um, implementing a semantic layer that at the end of the day gives you a kind of standardization in what you do, right? These are some of the aspects. To go on to the platforms that um, Himanshu also mentioned, right? Uh, do we do we use standardized platforms, or is it the case maybe that you know every analyst feels free to use something and then create results in a specific fashion? Standardization here as well, um, referring both to uh, reporting, visualization, uh, the analytics process, and so on. Um, how how do we make sure we have trusted insights? Right? Is there a certification process that has been well defined? So that what we generate out of data and and you know reports or models or what have you, um, have they been checked? Have they been consistent? Uh, what kind of process do we have in place to make sure this happens? Uh, and then I would also touch on uh, things we briefly mentioned before: the continuous up leveling of our team and the stakeholders as well, so that they can um, participate and communicate the results. Uh, and the uh, insights being generated in a holistic way. And finally, the experimentation that we already spoke about, right? Being, being uh, sure that we can infuse uh, scientific methodology within what we do so that we ensure that things are repeatable, well-founded, um, and, uh, and proven at the end of the day. Um, Is that? Go ahead, Lava. Huh? Oh, I was going to say, I mean, just just on on that, um, first of all, the thing that I one of the biggest things that I love about this new technology that we're going to is how much closer uh, data, data analytics and and technology are really coming. There's people that have really specialized in, you know, what we would call traditional IT and being able to bring these two things together in these technologies is is absolutely amazing because I love bringing that experimentation and that scientific approach to the things we're doing on in kind of traditional IT side. Um, when I was thinking about this, this kind of goes back to what Himanshu was talking about. Um, as we're dealing with our models, we're going to need to test and retrain those models on a continuous basis based on current data, I think. Um, and I'm starting to see a lot of technologies or people starting to talk about, okay, how do we truly test and how do we truly test for bias um, or, or changes in, in approach and against new data. Um, I think that's also going to become a big thing, especially as we kind of turn into quarter four. And the other thing I just wanted to bring out is absolutely governance is really important. Um, having a solid, AI governance model, a generative AI and modeling process and governance, and putting on top of that, making sure that that adheres to your data governance model, those things are going to be really important. So as we just kind of step off the ledge and start looking at these technologies, it's really important that we have our, our paper and policies together as a, as a regulated industry. So just another Thing to keep in mind as we go on. 
Absolutely. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for all three of your views. Um, I have one final question. Uh, maybe all three can chime in as needed. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, we spoke enough about the personalization part of it, change management, uh, the contributes to the knowledge sharing, and also we spoke about innovation, some of the restrictions in this uh, space, right, credit union space, while the regulatory and governance uh, adds to it. Uh, we also touched on data quality. Uh, one last thing which I wanted to ask is, uh, what are some of the essential factors uh, that contributes to the success in the fields of AI and automation? Right, I know it's a, again a, a very broader topic. You guys already picked some of the examples in all the uh, previous sections, but I wanted to summarize some of the views from you guys, you know, so that we can uh, go from there. And I don't, I, unless if I see any questions, I'll interrupt you guys. Go ahead. I'm sure Lara Zakur wants to start with, and I can start. Um, so I've learned things in this. Uh, you know, that, that I'm going to bring up to the top of the plate. Um, certainly, the organizational change management piece that Zach, uh, you've been talking about, I think is absolutely critical. Getting that coalition, appropriately communicating, getting people involved, and also explaining uh, this technology and how it's going to help and benefit and being transparent about it, I think is really, really important. Um, any technology that we put together, we have to make relevant to the mission of the organization. So not losing sight of the goal and where you're contributing value is gonna be really, really important because these are shiny new tools. And sometimes you can take a look at the tool and you can say, this is, this is awesome, guess what I can make it do. Um, but if that's not relevant to the mission of your organization, um, it's, it's just a shiny new toy. And then the last one is for anybody who has centers of excellence or is sitting in um, emerging technology, it's really important that you remember the players know the score. And that means make sure you have at your fingertips the, the numbers that you have, the relevance of your, of your program, and also you know, that you're, you're really projecting back um, real metrics to the organization to make this stuff real. So those would be to me the three things that I would look at for an AI nomination program. Thank you, Laura. I couldn't agree more. Um, very, very well, points very well taken. Uh, I, I will double down on the, on the fact that everything we do, AI or otherwise, and when we say AI, I know that we gave it a spin on large language models here, but this is not the whole story, right? everything machine learning wise and every initiative based on these things is relevant. So I would urge for, for all of us to have a view on the financial impact that at the end of the day, any kind of initiative based on these uh, directions uh, may uh, impart on what we do. Uh, I would urge somehow measuring also the effect that it has on member experience, right? And these two are intrinsically related. One can resort to things like uh, member lifetime value to have a long-term uh, kind of view on how AI or relevant initiatives affect uh, the member and uh, the financial pic picture that the member presents to the organization. Um, I think uh, experimenting, as I, as I mentioned before, is an integral part and we, nobody should be shying away from it. Uh, at the same time though, uh, one should be able to measure and expect uh, before one embarks into uh, implementing these things, uh, a notion of how that affects the member and the financial picture of the organization. Exactly. To, uh, yeah, ex uh, I agree with that. But to add on to that, to add on to one very important thing is also uh, up leveling the skills, right? Up leveling the skills of our te talent, our technology people, as well as our business partners because those these new emerging technologies are coming we need to help them to become to get used to right become familiar with understand get the fear out of our way the second area that we all need to think about is as a technology leader is a robust technology platform and infrastructure because our infrastructure that is capable of handling volumes of data complex algorithm integration with existing internal as well as ex external systems 
But as we are getting into this new technology, we don't want to forget about the legacy platforms and capability that we all have in our landscape. How do we divest some older ones that we don't need, right? Because we do want to to modernize, we don't want to simplify also. Otherwise, we are just adding more and more and more weight in our, our, our areas. But Zach's point is very important. This new emerging technology is helping us create in, uh, incremental customer lifetime value which means we need to have a sharp focus on the ROI, the business value of this capability. So totally, totally, totally agree. And then compliance is another aspect. So all of our technology, all of our use cases, bringing in that compliance aspect and making sure that we are doing what we say, that we committed to our customer and we committed to regulators that we're gonna do and it's all kind of comes together as a package. Thank you, Manshu. Uh, unless you guys want to add any other topics, uh, uh, if not, like, I think it's a great mindshare session we had. Thanks for both, uh, uh, sorry, all three of you, right? Lara, Manshu, and Zach, for sharing all of your viewpoints. I'm sure the attendees would have benefited. Uh, if any follow-up questions comes up, maybe like we will reach out to you offline so that you guys can share your perspectives on that. Uh, I think with that said, you know, thanks a lot. Uh, I think that's that's pretty much from my end. Over to you, Nathan. Thank you, thank you, Yuvraj. Thank you for you know moderating this session in a in a great way. And thanks, Laura. Thanks, Zach. And thanks, Imanshu, for sharing your views. You know, it was really exciting from the Great Union Innovation point of view. I'm sure all the attendees would have enjoyed it, and those who are live and those who are listening to us. So let me uh, you know, give a closing comment now. So we would like to express our appreciation to all our community partners. You know. All our speakers who have been with us throughout this journey for the last three years and all these attendees who have attended in our forums and who have attended and took time for you know engaging in this particular forum i know we have created a space for knowledge enrichment and our as the panel members were outstanding we value their willingness to collaborate and share the valuable insights for this particular event in case anybody of you miss any part of this session and want to revisit it Today's event will be available on our company's YouTube page for your convenience. As you know, exciting technological advancements are on the horizon and we are thrilled to explore more in this year, 2024. Looking ahead, we have a diverse lineup from AI Core Spot this year. We focus, we are focusing on different sectors such as banking, financial, insurance, telecom, retail, supply chain, manufacturing, healthcare, and so on. So stay connected with us for continuous learning. For more technological updates, visit our website and social media channels. We'll be sharing a wealth of knowledge, including details, announcement for upcoming events, and much more, aiding you in registration and attending the same. We look forward to your support. Please like and share our content on the social media channels. A heartfelt thanks to InfoVision, who is our knowledge and innovation partner, and Digit7, who is our technology partner. They have supported us in all the endeavors which we are till today. So explore their websites at infovision.com to delve deeper into technological advancements. We thoroughly enjoyed bringing this session to you and hope you found it as enjoyable as we did. We eagerly anticipate more sessions with you in the future. Take care. Have a great day and year ahead, guys. Thank you. Thank you.